Hello, good morning. Uh, it's six o'clock in the morning. I've been up for a couple of hours now. Uh, some students asked me about uh, pseudocode. All I can say is that you read Dean's book, chapter two that describes the flowchart and pseudocode in reasonable detail. The first chapter of my ebook, which is posted on D2L in the content area of your class, describes the coin star example where the flowchart is done, pseudocode is done, and then pseudocode is converted into Java source code. And that is described in detail. If both of those sources do not work, you can go, go to Google and type pseudocode and you'll get a lot of references. And that should help you. In any case, I decided to do this PowerPoint and video to just give you one more example of the pseudocode. So let's proceed. The first thing is, what is pseudocode? What is it? Well, basically, computer needs precise step-by-step -step instructions to solve a problem. Computers solve problem by running computer programs, but for that they need precise step-by-step -step instructions to solve the problem you want computer to solve. Now, if instructions are not in proper sequence or instructions are wrong or instructions are incomplete, then computer fails to solve the problem. And there is one more thing that if d d data are wrong, if instructions are incomplete or data are wrong, then also computer will fail to solve the problem. There's a saying in computer science that, <coughs> excuse me, that garbage in, garbage out, okay? If you put in garbage, you'll get the garbage out. If your data is garbage, there's no, no amount of having the correct instruction or proper sequence or complete instruction will work okay so that's additional thing of course that we don't worry about that in the pseudocode part and pseudocode makes sure that these problems that instructions in the proper sequence correct instructions and complete instructions exist when a computer program is written so none of these problems should exist if a proper pseudocode has been done Okay, <clears throat> so pseudocode is a step-by-step -step description of solution of a problem that is to be solved by the computer program. And pseudocode involves steps for getting user input for data, using mathematical expressions to crunch numbers from the data, and then outputting the results. Okay. And we call it pseudocode because it resembles programming language source code, but it's not written in programming language, it is written in English. That's why we call it pseudocode, that it looks like source code, but it is not. Okay, so now we're going to take an example of, for example, when you purchase something from a store, you have item price, you pay some sales tax on it and then you pay total price, which is sum of item price plus, plus sales tax. You could certainly write a computer program to com do this kind of computation. So we'll take that example in the pseudocode for the time being. So computing sales tax. So imagine that you make a purchase in a store and the cash register in the store has a software 
that does the following things. For example, the cash register by scanning the barcode reads the price of the item or of course in case of manual entry uh, clerk will enter either a code by hand or they can just directly enter the price and there is a tax rate stored in the point of sale terminal so from store tax rate and the item price which we got here we compute the sales tax and how to do that is simply sales tax is in a percentage so you can take the fraction part percentage converted to fraction multiply that by item price which will we will do that shortly and the formula for sales tax will be as follows sales tax equals item price multiplied by tax rate this tax rate has to be in a fraction so if tax rate is 10 percent then what I'm going to input in this formula would be uh, 0 0.1 okay that's how it is <clears throat> all right continuing on the total price to be paid by the buyer will be then item price plus sales tax so since we are going to write the logic of this whole process in a pseudocode we would imagine that we got the item price and tax rate provided to us in the program as user input okay the input on actual cash register is either from the scanner or a stored tax rate but in the program that we are going to do we're just going to prompt the user to input those data and then use that so before you write pseudocode you have to collect all this information that we just did here okay all the formulas uh, how the formulas are being applied how the data is entered and so on so in this case computing the sales tax I think we have enough information now to start writing the pseudocode so we do that on the next slide so in pseudocode we always say the first step is start that's the, that's the formality uh, when you compute when you actually write the source code you don't have to do any coding of this step it's automatically done for you by the programming language the reason we do in the pseudocode that we need to just know when when we started something and when later on there will be an end so when we ended something so we're going to prompt the user in this case to enter the item price <clears throat> and then we get the item price and store that into a variable named here item price in pseudocodes when we define a variable name we don't leave any spaces we use one continuous word next we prompt the user to enter the tax rate okay and the way I'm going to do here is they will have to enter tax rate in a fract as a fraction so if tax rate is 10 percent they will have to enter 0 0.1 okay and that can be changed if you want to change that to percent that's fine but then we will have to add one more formula uh, so I'm not going to do that here and then get and store into whatever tax rate they enter into a variable called tax rate so we got the item price we got the tax rate now we have the basis of computing the sales tax so the formula for the sales tax will be that needs to be would be converted into Java source code will be sales tax equals item price into tax rate and then since we got the sales tax we got the item price already <clears throat> then total price will be item price plus sales tax so by now at steps seven we have pretty much finished 
all our computation and now we need to just output the results so for output the results we pseudo code it like as follows print all these items item price tax rate sales tax and total price and the reason we want to print all this if you look at any receipt of a purchase that you made they will have all these pieces of information so it's a good idea to just print all those uh, at the end okay so our pseudocode pretty much ends here and of course the last step is end again this is a formality in pseudocode we have to do that showing that we have reached the end of the our pseudocode okay so this is a simple example of writing pseudocode for computing sales tax and we can program computer to do it now because our logic is fairly clear and pseudocode we wrote in previous slide forms the logical framework for writing a source code that will be fed to the computer and programming language specific details will be added at that time when we convert pseudocode to source code and as I said earlier if you read chapter one of my ebook uh, posted on, on D2L in content area uh, it clearly illustrates to you how for the Coinstar machine example how we do the flowchart then the pseudocode and exactly how we convert that pseudocode into Java source code and how we run the program and how we get the results and output so please read uh, chapter one of my ebook on d2l as well for more details thank you